Hey everyone, it's Mace1370. Today we are going to review and try out Ervalin, the new Earth Thief. Before we get into that though, a few quick plugs. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, I have started my own Discord for us to discuss Epic 7 and uh, other amazing things like pet pictures or just what's going on in your life, so please check the description of the video below and join the Discord so you can come hang out with us. Okay, Ervalin. He is a Earth Thief. And let's see here, it looks like his stat line is the exact same thing as Green Violet. So he's going to have good attack, uh, absolutely horrendous defense, very good health, that's important, we'll get back to that in a moment. Uh, good speed, um, he has some innate crit chance with Awakenings it looks like. And in addition to that, his self imprint is crit chance. So if you're really serious about building him, getting imprints is going to be super useful. Whenever you see a imprint concentration of crit chance, know that um, that is pretty much the best one you can get. Looking at his skills here, his S1 is pretty straightforward. It just gives a death break for two turns. Death break is obviously a very strong debuff, so that's a nice one to have on a skill one. His S2 is a single target damage ability. Um, it's a two turn cooldown, which is pretty low, and it gives him immunity, so he's gonna have like immunity every other turn, I guess. That's pretty nice. And if he attacks someone with more health than he has, it gives him a CR push. Um, also pretty cool. His skill 3, uh, longer cooldown, goes down to 4 turns with Mola. Um, it's a single target attack again, it looks like. It gives him a counter attack buff, and also a barrier for 2 turns. And then when the enemy's max health is greater than his, uh, his damage scales up, up to 60%. And the barrier strength scales in proportion to his attack. And let's see, his Mola's here look like pretty much just damage and damage and you can raise the death break chance so pretty standard there you know and of course the cooldown reduction uh let's see if you soul burn his s3 it extends the duration of his buffs by one turn which is pretty strong you know the counter attack buff is a very good one i know a lot of people have already kind of previewed this hero or you know talked about him a little bit and i don't think that many people are anticipating he's going to be you know game breaking or really shift the meta at all and i think there's a couple reasons for that one reason is that he really does not bring very much protection for himself, uh, and he's a squishy thief. So you look at thieves that do shake up the meta, like Rylet, for example, he does something to help him survive with his evasion buff. Ervalin, if you don't build him super fast to give him turn one, it's just going to be a sitting duck, kind of similar to Green Violet, who you, you know, want to build fast so that he can get the apple off and get his evasion going. Um, Ervalin gets a counterattack thing, which could, you know, dissuade people from attacking him, but he needs to be built super, you know, speedy to do that. So if you don't get turn one, he's squishy, unlike Remnant Violet, who just gets his buff right away. He doesn't have to get turn one to get the evasion. Um, he gets his barrier here, which, you know, could help a little bit, I guess. The other problem is his health is high. He has this really high stat line for health, but he scales, you know, ideally to like hit someone with more health than him. So why are they giving him a high health? I, I don't know, it doesn't really make sense. Um, other people I've seen have pointed that out as well, so that's not exactly a revelation, but I think it is true. So in terms of how we will, I think, build him, I think there's two options. One is to, you know, try to get up his counter attack buff as soon as possible. So just very similar to Remnant Violet, super fast, high damage, you know, and just go for the nuke. You know, and if they uh, hit him, or try to kill him, just hope the barrier and counterattack can survive. Um, I think that'd be a fine build for him. In my mind, it's kind of a budget Remnant Violet. Maybe his damage scaling against Bruiser teams might help, but it's just very counterintuitive to me. Like, you kind of want to build him tanky if you're going to take him into Bruisers so that he can survive long, drawn-out fights. But on the other hand, then that mitigates his damage. So you could then think maybe I'll stack defense, but that's super hard to do with this base defense. Um, it's absolutely trash. The other option, I suppose, would be to use health to, um, you know, give him some amount of survivability and put him on lifesteal. Uh, again, kind of like a bruiser, um, and hopefully the lifesteal with counterattacking, you know, could work. Again, this just kind of seems like a budget remnant violet in my mind. Um, I think the artifact for him is probably going to be Dream Blade, so we'll just put that on now. It just gives him some amount of protection and makes up for his, you know, lack of innate protection already. So the two builds I think I want to try, we'll try each one, I'll show you each here. Let me see what he looks like with uh, Lifesteal. So I think I had Lifesteal and, um, and Immunity. 
Maybe, let me think, let me think. I had uh, my Remnant Violet on Lifesteal for a long time, and I'm trying to remember how I did that build. Yeah, I think I definitely used the Abyss Sword, because my Abyss Sword rolled pretty well. Um, you know, lots of attack and crit chance and speed, so that was good. And I think I also used the Abyss Helm, which also rolled well, lots of attack and crit chance. And now we need to do immunity, so I probably, I think I had him on one of these chest pieces. Uh, maybe it was this one, just to get the defense high. Look at that, he's only at 910. Pathetic. Alright, uh, crit damage, and I think I had him on this neck. And then for a ring, I actually, I do have a defense lifesteal ring, but I don't think that... I don't think I'll be able to get the crit chance I want. If I do this, let's try it. Uh, I think these were the boots. Yeah, these boots rolled well. Alright, so... Um, yeah, I guess if I was able to make up his crit chance with his awakenings, he'd be pretty close to 100 there. So this isn't a horrible build. I mean, he's at 12k, so, you know, most... Um, most tanks that he's going to be going after are probably close to the 20k mark. And then some heroes will be even higher, like Alencia. You know, she's often 23k. So that's a big, you know, delta between those two. Um, so here's an option, but his attack is kind of low. I'm not sure how hard he's going to be hitting there. Let's see, what if we put him on an attack ring? Uh, so it needs to be lifesteal, so we have a couple options. You could look at this one, just to tank up. So here he's much, you know, less tanky in the defense department, but his crit goes up and his attack goes way up. So this is probably the build that we'd go for, because, his, yeah, his crit's 94. This doesn't have crit, so he'd be faster here, but his crit's going down. I think we'd have to go for this build. Um, I think he's tanky enough at this, you know, to take, like, maybe one hit. He's obviously not getting turn one. This is, I think, the build I ran Remnant Violet on when I had him on Lifesteal. Remnant Violet's base stats are obviously way better, so, you know, it looked better than this. But uh, Remnant Violet had evasion, you know, so he could take a few hits with evasion easily and not even worry about it. But even if even if they got through the evasion and hit him, he could take a hit or two, um, you know, and get to his turn and then heal back up. So here's one potential build that I'm going to test out. Another build that we could test out is basically going to be the speedy damage build. Um, so we can just steal whatever gear Remnant Violet has on right now, I think. So he's on speed crit. And I'll just sort by speed here, because a lot of, you know, Remnant Violet's speed gear is very speedy. Let's see, I don't remember what neck he was on. Oh yeah, it was just like all offensive. Did I miss the ring? No, I didn't. We can just sort uh, attack. Oh, you know what? It may not have had speed. That's why I'm, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, it just has just stats. I think um, I, if I can ever get a good ring, you know, with crit chance, crit damage, and speed, I'd probably swap that over. But some defense, you know, doesn't hurt him. Um, can help him survive a little bit. And we'll do speed here. Okay. So what is this looking like? Uh, 238. So not bad. I guess Remnant Violet has a higher base speed. So I think my Remnant Violet's like 242. Um, good attack, good crit damage, not quite 100% crit chance, but, you know, this will pack a punch. He doesn't have defense penetration like Violet does, or Rylet, but he does have, you know, that scaling difference. Um, so this could be okay here. Um, so this will be the other build that we test out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, just like do a practice match against somebody, and the gist of it will be that they're going to pick tanky units, and I'm going to ask them to just try to kill Ervalin as best they can. Um, I want them to hit into him so we get a good sense of, you know, how effective his shield is, how squishy he actually is on a build like this, um, you know, and how likely he is to survive and actually be able to do his job. So let's go check that out. Okay, so getting into the first match here, uh, before we get started, a uh, big thank you to Blade Runner, uh, Decario, and Social for helping me test. Uh, they're all in my guild and they were very helpful in doing these practice matches, so I really appreciate it. Thank you guys. In this first match here, I asked uh, Blade Runner to pick kind of a standard composition of healer knight, you know, damage damage, and I asked him to try to attack Ervalin, you know, as much as possible or just 
to focus on Ervalin and see how tanky he could be. In this particular fight, I have him on the non-tanky lifesteal build, so it's the one with a little bit higher damage, and I wanted to see, you know, with that lower tankiness uh, and higher damage, how Ervalin would be able to not only survive being focused, but also if he could put out pressure himself. Granted, you know, he doesn't have molas in any of these scenarios, but I think it gives you a generally good idea how well he can perform um, as a damage dealer. It's pretty easy to, you know, just add on the extra percentage damage that the moles would have done and figure out, okay, he would have killed here or he wouldn't have killed. Uh, here you can see into a defense buff on a Ruel. He is barely able to remove the shield. Um, that's on his S3. He might have, you know, obviously would have done more damage with Mola, but not super impressive. His Moonlight Dreamblade is firing off, though, which I wish would actually happen, you know, in a real fight. That's also with attack buff from Dain as well. So it seems to me like Ervalin is going to struggle a little bit with really high defense units. I know people are kind of uh, advertising him as a tank buster. I'm not sure how well he'll actually be able to perform at that. I think he might be better at attacking lower defense, high HP bruisers like Alencia. Uh, Blade Runner's Crow I know has less defense than his Ruel does, so I'm going to hit Crow a little bit here in this fight as well, just to get an idea for how uh, much damage he can do to Crow. You can see on the counterattack there, he smacked, you know, Arby pretty hard. I'm not sure though if Lifesteal is really the way to go with him. Again, with less Molas, he's doing less damage and healing less, but I'm not sure if it's worth a stat trade-off, because he's pretty slow here. The counterattack buff is, uh, Pretty impressive though. He's, you know, every time he gets attacked, he just counters right back. You can see, like, he's just healing for almost nothing. I mean, he got a miss there, but still, on the crowd, I think he healed for around 600. It doesn't feel like enough to me. Uh, even with full molas, it might be better, I guess, but. And then there you can just see the difference with Rylet. Like, Rylet on, you know, DPS gear, just popping the Dain completely. So, I was not a huge fan of this particular build. It felt like it didn't have enough uh, benefit for being slow and tanky. Um, I feel like if you're going to run him around this speed at 187, I think it might be better to give him even more defense so he's even tankier and really play for the long game. Um, I think that would be a more optimal situation, kind of like what I did with that defense ring. Um, you know, when we were going over build, something something like that with like 1400 defense. Um, if you're going to go that slow. One benefit of him being slow, however, is that he gets to keep his counterattack, you know, buff for quite a long time. Uh, so there he hit the crowd for 3.5k on the counter. Not horrible. There, that was 5k. Um, and here's a problem you can see with Irvlin. When he loses his initial buffs, uh, he is very vulnerable. Uh, he does not have, you know, any survivability. Um, he does have his, you know, the shield from haste, but he doesn't have, uh, you know, kind of a way to fight back at this point. It's kind of a, you know, an open gap uh, where the opponent can really punish him. So I feel like some opponents will, you know, see the buffs go on him, ignore them until they fall off, and then just focus him. And so for that reason, I'm not sure how great he's going to be as a bruiser, but I think he I think he can work in the right team comps. You're not even close to my level. I need to teach you how to behave. There you can see the hit down is really punishing. Don't be late. Um, Dreamblade is, I think, the go-to for him, at least uh, for now. You can see it procking multiple times here and just totally saving him. Because I, I don't think he would have lived there without the Dream Blade. Um, you see, he is able to kill squishy targets pretty easily, though. He got that dual attack and just eliminated the RB, so that was nice. So now that crowd has gone, uh, the opponent doesn't have Aureus anymore, so I go into the Ruel. So 5.5k on the S1, uh, and that was, you know, even without Lola's. Shall we go to the land? So fairly decent damage. Um, 
So after seeing this fight, uh, I decided to do some tests with the more defensive lifesteal build. Um, and I wanted to see what would it look like if uh, Irvlin was on that build and he was facing, you know, very squishy opponents um, who were trying to focus him. Which is perhaps not like a 100% realistic scenario, like they might ignore him and go for somebody else. Um, here you can see 8.4k on the Ruel. Um, so fairly decent, you know, that's going to hit hard uh, once it's fully enhanced. Okay, let's do another practice match and see what happens when Irvalin gets ignored on this damage lifesteal build. Okay, so we're partly through the match and you can see that Irvalin has his counter attack buff up. Pretty much all of the pressure so far has come from ML Crow. Probably should have used a different unit for testing so Irvalin could, you know, fall or stand on his own. He's able to get a counter attack there off of uh, SSB's S3, but it just doesn't even penetrate through the shield. So at this speed and damage, he's just not really able to pose a threat if totally ignored. I think even with Molas, it wouldn't make a difference. Um, you can see the opponent's able to just pick off, you know, my two knights here and just ignore Irvalin. Fallen CC has defense break from Seaside Bologna. So I'm probably not going to be able to keep her up. I am able to get off some damage here with ML Crow, uh, but you know, with Irvalin kind of dragging behind, it's just not enough to really turn the match around. Charles does Charles things, and then SSB does SSB things, further whittling everyone down. I'm trying my best to finish off the Alencia. The dual attack almost gets it, but not quite. Luckily, Dane does not have any heals to uh, top her back off. But my FCC is also in trouble of dying. And down she goes. And from here, it's really just, you know, the opponent slowly whittling me away. Okay, here I asked uh, Blade Runner to pick a bunch of DPS heroes, you know, they're all pretty squishy, and to just focus Irvalin as best they could. Here he's on the tanky lifesteal build, so I decided to test him out with that defense ring, and the intent of this fight was to see what if, you know, I drafted him as like an anti-cleave unit, or what if I put him in a scenario where the opponent was being very aggressive with their draft, you know, so they didn't have a lot of sustain, and I picked heroes like Irvalin, you know, with healers and tanks to back him up. Um, you know, especially heroes with AoE like Arby, who uh, have to hit him. Is he able, you know, with this low damage, high defense build, able to take out these squishy targets um, and then use the defense to stay alive? Here you can see his S3 uh, pretty much taking out the Arby uh, right away. With Molas, it definitely would have one shot. And he gets that nice barrier from his S2, uh, which could help, you know, protect him from the Arby. Uh, S3 here. You can see with Greater, it didn't even go all the way through that barrier. So 1400 defense with that barrier is a nice combo. I've always loved the way that defense and barriers interact. Him losing immunity there is painful, so I had to clench with Ruel. Um, he's still on Dreamblade. You can see that saves him here from the Rylet. I almost wish it hadn't have proc, just so we could have seen you know, what his damage would have been like. You know, and again, this isn't a realistic scenario in that, you know, if Irvalin's sitting here with counter-attack buff and the opponent's ignoring all the other heroes. Or, sorry, and the opponent's ignoring, you know, um, all the other heroes. But, you know, you could have him in a scenario like this against potentially a cleave team if they've taken out some of your other people and they have to start hitting him. It's just going to be a little tricky, you know, maybe deciding when to activate his uh, skill 3 buff. Um, or if you're able to bring a book and soul burn it so you get one more turn, could be potentially helpful. Uh, here he hit the Rylet and, you know, killed him, so that was pretty sweet. 
Perhaps this type of build might only work against AoE heroes that have to hit him, so he's going to be counterattacking. But I think that it shows that this build can be viable against teams with high damage squishy units that um, are incentivized or forced into hitting Urbalin. Okay, in this fight I have Ervalin on the Rylet damage gear, and I wanted to test, you know, how well he could do as a super speedy damage unit, you know, pairing him with Falcon or Clurry, pretty much how I use Rylet right now and how many other people use Rylet. Because of the speed tuning, I'm forced to do this into Rass so he can't get defense buff up. Uh, Dakaria picked a bunch of fire units, I think mostly just to frustrate me during testing. Uh, but luckily I get the crit here, so we are able to su uh, successfully see how much damage he could do. Um, so that was very good, I think. Um, with Molas, I think he would have killed there. And certainly Fallen CC would have killed, you know, with the follow-up, um, if Irvalin hadn't. And so I think this might be the more viable build, or the more universally, um, applicable build. Because you can make him a threat, and this is kind of how I feel about Violet on Lifesteal. Unless you're planning on going into Frenzy. Um, which, with Ervalin, I don't think is necessarily the best idea, because you go into Frenzy and eventually his buffs will fall off, and he's going to be kind of a sitting target. Violet, or I should say, ML Violet, always has his evasion buff. You know, he's always getting the counter stacks when he's attacked. Um, Ervalin, though, if you build him fast... He's going to be able to be useful before Frenzy, and this counterattack buff is nasty. You know, every time they hit him, he's going to do damage back. Um, you know, and the shield does give you a decent amount of survivability once you get it off, so being speedy kind of removes the disadvantage he has of being squishy in the beginning of the fight. Um, because his damage is so high, the opponent really doesn't want to attack him, and you're essentially going to get free reign to turn cycle with Ervalin while you have those buffs up. So I could see this being, you know, a very good combination with Falcon or Clurry, and, um, you know, instead of like the tanks or like Fallen Cecilia have here, you know, pairing him with um, other aggressive damage dealers like RB and, you know, maybe ML Crow, for example, just to add even more damage. A very similar role to how, you know, speedy DPS Rylet is built. So if you don't have Rylet, I think he could be a good stand-in for that type of role. Um, you are even less incentivized to attack him than you are Riley, because Riley you can get a little, you know, poking a few times with AoE damage and no repercussions. Ervalin, though, uh, when he has his buffs up, like, you just don't want to touch him at all. So, uh, that's all for now. I think that, um, he's definitely a viable unit in some scenarios. He surprised me, does a little more damage than I thought he would, and, um, my expectations were low going in, but he exceeded them, so... I think he could definitely be a pull for you if you don't have Remnant Violet and you're looking for a hero that can perform a similar type of role on your teams. Thanks for watching. Later.